Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Women's History Month kickoff presentation with Texas State Representative Elizabeth Liz Campos. Before the session begins, we will quickly discuss Zoom netiquette. This session will be recorded. If you experience any connectivity issue, please re-enter the session utilizing the same link you initially used. Please ensure your audio is muted throughout the session and be mindful of any background distractions. We, we will have an opportunity for a Q&A at the end of the presentation. You can use the chat function located at the bottom of your screen. We thank you for joining us. It is our pleasure to introduce Cindy Katz. Good evening. I'm Cindy Katz, co-chair of the St. Phillips College Women Histories Month Committee, alongside my co-chair, Kelly Wilder. We would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you to tonight's kickoff event of the St. Phillips College 2021 Women's History Month. We would like to offer our gratitude to the members of the committee, our leadership, President of St. Phillips College, Dr. Adina williams Lawson, Vice President Randall Dawson, and Vice President Dr. Vanessa Anderson, and our public relations and IIC teams who have all worked tirelessly to ensure the success of these events. We have a great calendar of events for the month. Please check it out. The link to the calendar is in the chat. While you're in the chat, please submit any questions you have for Rep Campos. Without further ado, I would like to introduce Interim Vice President for College Services, Dr. Vanessa Anderson. Thank you. Welcome to St. Phillips College. The national theme for Women's History Month is Valiant women of the vote. And we have a full calendar of events to celebrate and educate. We are kicking off Women's History Month by highlighting the impact one woman has on our state legislature. State Representative Elizabeth Liz Campos of House District 119 is serving her first term in the Texas House of Representatives. She represents the cities of San Antonio, Converse, Live Oak, Schertz, St. Hedgewidge, and Universal City. Representative Compost has authored important legislation to improve the quality of life for seniors in nursing homes, assisted living facilities, and independent living. Compost also filed legislation to address homelessness and affordable housing in Bear County, including funding for the construction and rehabilitation of affordable housing. She is working to expand Medicaid, fully fund public schools and finance local infrastructure projects that generate jobs, create opportunities and reduce poverty. Representative Campos is the first woman elected to represent District 119. She has 30 years of experience as a legal administrator and previously served in the Texas legislature as a House Constituent Coordinator, Senate District Director, and Senate Chief of Staff. Representative Campos serves as a member of the Public Health and Urban Affairs Committees. In addition to donating her time to community service, Campos is a successful businesswoman and third generation plumber. She lives in Southeast San Antonio with three German shepherds, Jojo, Mona, and Lobo. I hope Representative Compost's experiences and wisdom inspire you today. To continue the celebration, please go to alamo.edu slash SPC slash WHM. Hi, everyone. Um, how are y'all today? It's good to see everyone and thank you. It is a real honor to be here today. Um, I'm so grateful for this opportunity and want to thank um, my good friend, 
uh, Valentine Merchant. She, she's uh, her and I are really good friends. I consider her my best friend and, and, and thank you all for having me today. Um, so I'm going to share a little bit about who I am, where I came from and how I got here. Um, born and raised on the Southeast side of San Antonio. I've lived on Rigsby for 51 years. I purchased a house across the street from, um, where I was raised. It used to be my grandfather's house and then my mother um, inherited it. And then um, I purchased a house across the street from her 24 years ago. So born and raised in the district, um, I um, went to Brackenbridge High School. My um, Everything that I have done in my life, I, I have done um, as a result of my parents and I try to live by their values because they have, you know, um, really good good values in that very caring very loving very giving and most of anything integrity is is, is extremely important for our family and um so my dad um what he used to work for cps energy for 30 years retired from there and uh, my mom was a stay-at-home mom she raised six kids and uh, eight grandchildren and she was just an amazing mom. Um, unfortunately, at the age of 16 years old, my dad passed away unexpectedly um, after he retired. And with that being said, um, I was going to school um, at Brackenbridge High School and I was in the vocational program of a paralegal course. And so um, when my dad passed away, I, uh, I was going to school half a day and working half a day for a lawyer and then going uh, working in the evenings. Um, at HEB and or the Genery. So at the age of 16, you know, 17, I was working three jobs. Me and my brothers and sisters all pulled together to uh, continue to keep what my parents had built because uh, my dad worked very hard. And again, my mom was a stay-at-home mom. So my brothers and sisters, we we came together and, and we just supported the family the best that we could. And um, Unfortunately, I did not continue with, um, you know, my college degree. Um, I did go to St. Philip's for a short time, but it was just really difficult uh, working three jobs. And I will tell you that I'm, I'm very proud that I'm self-educated by work experience. Um, started off, you know, as a legal assistant, uh, I'm sorry, a clerk, and then um, secretary, legal assistant, paralegal administrator. Then I became a... Um, a staff for a state senator and uh, his district was SD 19 it covered 23 counties so I would travel um, I opened up the Capitol office the San Antonio office the Eagle Pass office the Beckles office I would fly into Midland and drive to Beckles because they don't have an airport and then we had two satellite offices and throughout all those districts I staffed them managed them travel throughout the, you know, throughout the month, I put all the events together. And I'm proud to say that one of the largest events that the senator had was at Palo Alto College. It was a back to school uh, event. And I helped, you know, create that. Uh, we did our first one at San Pedro Park. And I'll never forget that event because he had just gotten into office and he's like, I want to give away 10,000 backpacks. And I was like, okay, well, let's do it. So we did it like from one day to the next. And it was, it was, I'll never forget that event because we were so unprepared and weren't, we didn't know what we were doing. You know, <laughs> the truth is, but uh, the 18 wheeler, um, I had organized the whole event. The 18 wheeler gets into town and he's like, Hey, where do you want me to drop these? backpacks and I was like drop the backpacks what are you talking about like there's no place to drop them you just have to go to the park he's like well I can't I, I have an 18 wheeler like I gotta travel anyways one thing led to another and he was able to drop the 18 wheeler at San Pedro Park and we were able to distribute 10,000 backpacks that day so <laughs> so I've done some really big events and being really involved in the community and I'm very grateful for those opportunities and I'll never forget you know what the senator did by giving me the opportunity to be a chief and to be involved aside from my family values that my mother and my dad were always giving and caring um so have so being able to you know actually work with the community it all came together and just inspired me to do more um 
So I left the senator's office in 2010. And then five years ago, I decided to open up a business for my family. There's three generations of plumbers. And with my experience, you know, in the, in the, being an administrator and knowing business, I thought it would make a good fit and it did. And so my brother is my partner. And so we have a servicing company that specializes in plumbing and we've done, um, you know, we've done good and, and it's good for the family. And then um, I decided, um, yeah, I took care of my mom um, before she passed away. And um, it was the most rewarding thing that I've ever done in my life. And I'm just sorry that I wasn't able to take care of my father. I mean, I was younger, but I would have done it for him as well. But taking care of my mom was the best thing that ever happened. And, re and that is what really inspired me to run and to be a voice for the seniors because I was able to overcome so many obstacles with her, whether it was with doctors, with hospitals, with insurance, because of my knowledge and because of my experience. And I, I felt bad for the other seniors that um, you know didn't have that support. And so taking care of my mom, my aunt, my uncle, you know, just all that really inspired me to just be a voice for the people. And I, I ran that throughout my campaign and I'm continuing to do that. I want to be a true voice. This, I'm not, a, you know, I don't want to be a career politician. You know, it's a choice that I've made to serve. And um, with everyone that I've met, um, you know, now being in office, I make that very clear. I'll give you an example. You know, we've got some projects coming up that um, are for affordable housing, and they're definitely needed in this area. There's there's one that's for um, seniors, and then there's another one that's they're they're attempting to do that has to do with providing homes for mental health, and. You know, the district has always been, you know, somewhat negative about developments and, and not wanting, you know, public housing. But, um, you know, again, I know my district and it's definitely needed. But what I stress to the developers is that, you know, I am not um, like the typical politician to just take things for granted and and do whatever, what, what I'm doing here is not for me, it's for the people. So when it comes to different situations like developing, I'm making it a point to keep my district involved. Um, I had one situation and, and I, I told the developer, this is my process. And my process is for you to reach out to all the neighborhood associations in the surrounding area, because if we're gonna let you come into our district, we need to be able to depend on you and you need to be able to give something back to my district, even if it's just being involved with them and knowing that their voice matters. So I'm really trying to do the best that I can to be a true public servant because people are important to me. And that's why I have, Pat, I'm trying to pass the legislation that I have filed with regards to nursing homes. I mean, we've seen what happened with COVID and the nursing homes, you know, need a lot of work. And, um, and it's not about knocking anyone. It's about working with the different entities, the different organizations to make them better. Uh, same thing with homeless. I feel like, you know, we, we can't forget that these individuals, um, you know, they're, they're human beings and, and nobody wakes up in the morning and decides to be homeless. Something has happened in their life, whether it's mental illness, whether they've, you know, become, um, you know, they have an addiction or they've just fallen hard on life, whether losing a job or a divorce. I mean, there's all kinds of scenarios and we should not take life for granted as, as we've seen here. You know, one day we're, you know, great. And, you know, tomorrow we could be homeless. Like it, it can happen to anyone. So I always try to put myself in other people's shoes and, and not forget where I come from and stay humble. And so I'm very, very grateful to have this opportunity to serve the community. And also I'm grateful to have the experience that I had as a chief of staff and to be able to go to Austin and truly fight for the people because um, the community is very, very important to me and education is, you know, priority. And I'm so happy that we're going to be able to continue to get funding. We were a little concerned about that 
because finally in the 86th uh, session, you know, we were able to get uh, funding for education, which we hadn't gotten for a long time. And so we we're really concerned that that was going to, you know, be taken away. And so we're good with that and I'm happy about it. So I'm, I'm all about, you know, I, I want to do workshops, you know, one session's over. I want to get involved with the high schools and, and do what I need to and work with the colleges closely to encourage students to continue their education and start them at a young age. And so I'm really happy about how the high schools now are offering, you know, college credits um, because that's helping them advance. And so I'm really, you know, proud of that and, and happy to do anything that I can. So, you know, I tell everyone that I have an open door policy for everyone because I think everyone serves a purpose, whether you're an elected official or you're a teacher or a doctor. I mean, we all serve a purpose and we all believe in what we believe in. Therefore, we need to be heard. And so I want to I want to have that open door policy for everyone and do what I can um, to help the community. And it's all about working together and collaborating and communicating, because even though, you know, we may not agree on everything, um, you know, we may not agree on one issue, but we may agree on the next one. And so we just have to continue to stay open minded and respect each other's beliefs and just do what the best that we can for each other. So, um, again, you know, I'm very happy uh, to be here. I'm ecstatic to be here. I think it's a great opportunity. And, um, you know, there, there's a lot of work to be done. And, and um, um, I got some big shoes to fill, you know, <laughs> um, but I'm happy to do it. And I've got the energy to do it. Um, I'm working really closely with the seniors and, uh, you know, trying to get them situated. Um, I've got a lot going on with uh, San Antonio housing. I'm trying to work with them because I feel like a lot needs to be done um, with the senior living facilities. And so uh, I'm, I'm pushing as much as I can. So if there's anything that I can ever do for any of y'all, please feel free to contact me from the simplest thing in the district to an issue in Austin. It, everything's important. And please know that. So it matters to me and I wanna hear from you. Thank you, Representative Campos. I am Adrian Jackson. I am Director for Marketing and Strategic Communications at St. Phillips College. I have a few questions for you, but I also want to encourage everybody to submit questions in the chat and I will ask those on your behalf and we'll just keep hitting you with questions. My first question is you have three dogs. What kind of dogs do you have? German Shepherds. All three of them. All three? <laughs> okay, yes, they're deal. all three. <laughs> they act like they're little uh, teacup poodles, but they're not. <laughs> <laughs> not by a long shot, right? No, they're 100 pounds each, so they're huge. <laughs> but thank you for asking that. They're my babies. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Um, what motivates you to get out of bed in the morning? Just to be able to serve just to to wake up again i'm so ecstatic to be here and just to know that i can truly truly make a difference it's so um rewarding when i accomplish um you know something for the community i'll give you an example i was talking to an 82 year old woman the other day um during the storm i went out to a facility to to feed them and um she was having a hard time breathing and needing, she needed a um, oxygen tank. And so she says, I can't get it. So I said, who's your provider? Who's your doctor? So I made calls and I did it myself because my staff, we were all over the place. I mean, I did a taco, taco initiative and we collected like $1,200 and we got like 1200 tacos because the, the restaurant that I was dealing with, they said, since you're doing this, I'll give you tacos for a dollar. And I was like, great. So uh, we were able to feed, you know, we got 1200 tacos out and then I got 400. Um, I got a hundred um, plates from Bill Miller's, a hundred plates from Whataburger. I mean, just, I was just getting food all over the place. And one individual that I went to go talk with. And um, so I, I started making calls myself from, you know, her apartment on my cell phone. And um, I was able to talk to her healthcare provider. And I, I was a little disheartened at first for the conversation because I didn't say, you know, I'm a state rep. I just said, you know, I'm Liz mm -hmm. Campos and I'm calling on behalf of Ruby. And, and she's like, oh no, she, she's got some mental issues. And, you know, no, um, 
we're going to take care of it. And then, then at that point I said, ma'am, you know, I'm a state representative and I'm really concerned about her and we, you need to make a call to her doctor and get her an oxygen tank. It's imperative. And so we did it within, she got an oxygen tank within three years, three days. So she calls me and she tells me, Liz, you know, thank you so much for doing this. She says, I needed an oxygen tank for two years now. And she says, I wouldn't, I couldn't get it through my health care. So what I've done is I've got an, a senior liaison and I'm having her go to all the facilities with seniors on a weekly basis to meet with them and find their, find out their needs. And again, it's all about communication. So when I'm able to do something like that for a person that's in need, it's very rewarding to me. And, you know, in the past, before I even ran for office, I placed um, some homeless families and it was like pulling teeth. It was just so hard. So I, I understand the struggles people go through and I understand how hard it is for them to get their benefits or help. That's what that's what inspires me. And that's what inspired me to run, because now I know what I need to look for and what my staff needs to look for and how they need to work with the community to make things happen for them. Good. Thank you for that. Uh, when did you first know you wanted to work in public service? Well, I started working uh, for the senator in 2000. And um, I was working for him at the law office. So I was his paralegal at the time. And then I became his administrator. And um, I started getting involved with him um, and, and doing his campaigns, working on his campaigns. And then that's how I started getting involved in politics. And then I just started to like it. I started putting his events together as a, when he was a state rep and uh, getting involved in the campaign. And I just enjoyed it. I enjoyed being, being out there and meeting people and then them coming to me and needing help and me being able to resolve their issues. Good, thank you. What women do you look up to? Oh gosh, there's, there's um, my mom. My mom is just, you know, she's just an amazing woman. I mean, um, just what she instilled in us, you know, she was a very, a uh, classy woman and uh, she was an amazing mom. My sister, my sister, Anna, she's my rock. You know, um, she's, you know, guides me and has supported me, all my sisters, but me and my sister, Anna are very, very close. And she, um, yeah, she's my rock and she, there's nothing I don't do without her. And she's been by my side since day one. Uh, is she your older sister? She's my older sister. Yes. Okay. I'm the I have an old, I have two older sisters and one of them I call my surrogate mom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I have three older sisters. I'm the youngest out of six. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm -hmm. What inspired you to get involved in the legal profession when you were in high school? Um, I was in, um, actually my sister, Anna, she had gone to St. Phillips and got her paralegal associates. And so um, she was in, you know, going towards the legal field. And so I wanted to do it as well. And so um, at the time, Brackenbridge offered a uh, paralegal vocational course. And so I got involved in that. And then my sister actually obtained a job with an attorney as a clerk. But then at the same time, she got a paralegal position. So she says, why don't you apply for the clerk position? And I was in school at the time. Um, and then that's when my dad, you know, was ill and what have you. And so I applied for the position. And then the principal made an exception to allow me to work half a day and go to school half a day because of the opportunity of working with an attorney. Wow, that's an amazing opportunity for a 17 or 18 year old. That's yeah. life changing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it changed um, my life, yeah. Oh, that's great. What are your next political aspirations? You know, I, I'm so happy to be where I'm at and I'd like to be here for a while. I want to to stay in this position because I really think that I can make an impact. And again, this is not like a stepping stone for me. Like I'm content where I'm at right now and I want to make an impact. Something may arise later and that would be great but I'm just so happy to be where I'm at right now and make the impact that I can with, you know, getting some positive laws um, change for the people. Thank you for that. Uh, when you deal with fellow representatives, what is the biggest challenge you've encountered? Mm, well, um, 
I guess during the campaign, it was, you know, a bit challenging because um, it's hard to gain support. But I will tell you, um, you know, once I won the election, they've been wonderful. They've been, you know, very, very supportive. They've welcomed me. And I'm, I'm not talking just about the San Antonio delegation. I'm talking about all the rep. I mean, it's really um it's amazing to be up there and to be working because you're sitting on the house floor. There's 150 representatives and there's all kinds of personalities. But at the end of the day, we're there to get a job done and we work together to the best of our ability. It's like a family. And we all say it regardless of the party. We do our best right for, you know, to work on what we're there for. And we all have different, you know, districts, you know, I mean, you have people in the rural area, you have, you know, it's just, it's, everybody's so different, but at the end of the day, we're all trying to do the right thing. So it's not really been that challenging because I think of my mentality, I stay very, very positive. And, and I know that, you know, my dad had a saying and it was, you know, we all put our pants on the same way, stay humble. <laughs> You know, you're not better than anyone. No one's better than you. We all come from the same and just stay positive and stay humble. So those, whenever I do have challenges, I remember my parents' values and I'm, I, I've been determined and I'm committed. And I know from the bottom of my heart that I'm doing the right thing. And that's what gets me through any challenges. Good, good. Um, what organizations do you volunteer with and what do you recommend for others? Well, I, um, you know, I have always done a lot of community work, but I can't say that I've actually connected with an organization um, just because of my experience, you know, and um, I've done a lot of things on my own, um, just like getting involved with homeless. That's a big task. And I was able to overcome it. And I just did it by going out and reaching out to the homeless and finding out who they are, what they're about. Um, it, it, it's very dear to me, you know, because again, I think that nobody wakes up in the morning and wants to be homeless. Something has, has happened to them, right? So we need to just not forget them. So I've always, you know, gone out and, and fed them and given them clothing and talked to them and trying, you know, just trying to help them. Um, so that's one thing that I've always done with the homeless. And then also, um, you know, the seniors going out and visiting them. And, and whenever I can gather um, others to get involved, like I did this past, during the storm, I teamed up with a restaurant and, you know, just put it out there on social media. So I think that um, if you believe in something, you just got to, you know, commit yourself and, and be determined and do it. And just, and getting involved with organizations are great. It, it, it is, it, it makes you stronger. Um, but I've done, you know, a lot of the things I've done, I've done on my own because I'll do it from one minute to the next. I'll just get up and go out there and, and, and put myself out there for the people. Good, thank you. Uh, how do you do your makeup? How do I do my makeup? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I just get up and put it on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I I don't. I don't. I don't know. I just uh, let's see. So what do I use? I use Revlon. I use a, a what do they call it? the the blender? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. But, um, if we hear of an issue or a problem, what is the best way for a constituent to bring it to you? And can you share some information in the chat? Yes, absolutely. I will give you my um, office information. I will give you my, let's see. Email is to everyone. So I'm also going to be opening up an office here in San Antonio at Brook City Base. And um, I'm hoping to have that open by the middle of March. Um, normally, legislators, um, new legislators, freshman legislators, don't do that, um, you know, right when they get into office because we go to session, you know, so it's hard to do the do both. But 
I was fortunate enough to be able to get an office at Brook City Base that I'm very, very happy about. It's a good size office and I want to have it open to everyone. I want to be able, you know, if you, if you need to use a computer, if you need to uh, make copies, I mean, some of the basic things that are needed. So when I say I'm going to have an open door, I mean it for everyone. And if I can't help you, I'm going to find a way to help you or at least make the attempt. Uh, you're gonna appreciate the effort that I'm gonna put into it. But I'm gonna give you my district number, uh, let's see, in Austin. Okay, and so you are a graduate of Brackenridge, right? Yeah. Well, I um I got out of school and I got my GED from ah, uh, okay. Yes. So what advice do you have for young women who are graduating from Brackenridge? Well, I just think that um stay in school you know, do whatever it is that you need to. And that's another thing I want to offer. I want to offer anyone that has any challenges with getting into college, if they need help, to please reach out to me. I have a senior liaison that has been involved um, with the colleges and she's very well knowledge and I'm happy to have her on my team. And so I, again, I want to be able to collaborate, but I think school is important. It's priority. And it, the best thing I can advise is to, um, you know, as soon as you graduate from high school, don't skip beat and just continue with education so that the sooner you can finish it, the better, and then you can be successful. Um, so yes, it, anything that I can do for to help you all with, um, you know, scholarships, grants. Um, I'm hoping at some point to do some workshops and, and to reach out to the high schools in my district and just offer, you know, as much as services as I can. Of course, again, this is my first session. It's, it's you know, and um, so trying to get my office and everything situated, but I'm really helping to to reach out to the community and to, I'm also uh, talking to the schools and I, I think it's really important to bring back the vocational schools, the trade schools, um, you know, that can provide plumbing, electrical, um, um, AC, I mean, um, education is priority. And I wish that, you know, everyone would, you know, go to college and, and get their master's and their bachelor's, but it's not for everyone. And, um, you know, I think the vocational schools are important. I mean, I can tell you from my experience of owning a plumbing company, and I've had some jobs, you know, at um, the government level and right off the bat, you know, the, we have to pay our plumbers and plumbers helpers $42 an hour. So that's a good amount of money for kids that are in their 20s. So, and, you know, there, there's just some, some young, um, you know, kids that want to be plumbers and electricians and, you know, like their father. And so I think it's really important to bring back the trade schools. And so I'm really yes. really and for that. There are a lot of um, P tech schools opening up now and a lot of cast programs that are opening up now as the Texas and other states are realizing that there's an equal value to pursuing a career technical career versus in a uh, university degree career. They both have equal value and you can be just as successful in, in both. And St. Phillips is partnering with a lot of local high schools, including Brackenridge, yeah, on yeah. getting students into those pipelines so they can realize those dreams. Absolutely, and anything that I can help with that, please keep me in mind. I, I'd be happy to dive into it um, because that that's real important that we get back to that. And, you know, for cosmetology also, I mean, you know, uh, mechanics, I mean, I remember back in the school, they had a mechanics class. And so mm -hmm. it's uh, all of it's important. I think so too. Um, how has the San Antonio community or the community, the district that you serve inspired you? Uh, oh my God, they've been amazing. Just so supportive. Just, just, I mean, I, I, I'm just, um, it really touches my heart to see that I've got so much support 
And I, I'll tell y'all what I've told them. I don't make any promises to anyone. I will never do that, especially if I can't keep it. But all I can say is that I'm going to do my best to serve. My goal is to be your voice and just to, to speak up for you and to be that uh, fierce Latina that's you know not afraid to speak up for the people. <laughs> <laughs> More of those, please. Yes. Um, give, give us your favorite quote or the quote that inspires you the most. Um, let's see. I have several. So, um, there is a quote and it is, um, I can't think right now. I have it at the tip of my tongue. Let's see. It says, um, God, I have it at the tip of my tongue. So, you can't forget, you'll, you'll always forget what people said to you, but you'll never forget how they made you feel. Ah, uh, Maya Angelou said Maya that. Angelo. And yeah. I live by that. I live by that. I try so hard because I never want to hurt anyone's feelings and really want to do right by the people. Mm -hmm. So that's one of my favorite quotes. One of my new favorites is we all put our pants on one leg at a time. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we all put our pants on. So my dad had, he was like, we all put our pants on the same way. Don't mm -hmm. bite the hand that feeds you and don't knock anybody when they're down. So, you know, I, I'm not sure if, if you're aware of, you know, the Senator that I worked for um, and he's, you know, got some issues now. And so during my campaign, um, they brought that up, right, that I worked for him. But we all know that employees are not responsible for um, your employer, right? Right. And so um, I got approached with that quite a bit. And I was very happy to say that I would never, ever forget what he did for me. I would never, ever speak ill of him. I was very sorry to see what had happened to him. But you just don't, you can't forget the good in people you know, and I was not about to knock him. He, and you, you couldn't, you couldn't hurt him anymore. Like he did it to himself and it was terrible. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that one day he'll be able to come back and, and do good again because he, he was a good person, but, um, I, I had not, I was long gone before any issues even came about, but I'll never forget the opportunities that he gave me. And, and that goes for other people. I'm very, um, you know, friendships are important to me. I like to build long lasting relationships. I will tell you that working with him and um, back in the day, um, I still kept in contact because I'm the type of person that likes to build bridges. I'm very loyal. Um, mm -hmm. People really do matter to me. And so when I was campaigning, um, I, you know, needed support. And I reached out to a lot of individuals from Austin that I had built relationships with and they remembered me and they, you know, they were happy to support me. And, and they were, um, cause I was, I was a hard worker as a chief and I was, I was very proud about what I did. So, um, Great. I like to build long lasting relationships. Good, good, good. Um, where do you stand on immigration, immigrant families and dreamers? adults who got here as children? I, I believe that they should happen, have an opportunity to stay in the United States. However it is that they got here for whatever reasons that they got here, they have a right to stay here. Um, a, a lot of them are hard workers and have put themselves through school and are you know, educated and, and they deserve to stay here. So I'm definitely, you know, for that. I do think that, uh, um, the immigrants need to be vetted, right? Just like anything else. But um, I don't think that's unreasonable to make sure and vet them. But yeah, for the dreamers, I, th I think they have a right to stay here and I will fight for that. Thank you. Um, what are the best indicators of economic health? I'm sorry? What are the best indicators for economic health, the stock market, unemployment, healthcare, income, et cetera? Well, I mean, right now it's just um, so difficult, right, with COVID. And so I'm happy to be on public health. I'm not sure if you know the committees that I'm on, mm -hmm. um, public health and uh, urban affairs. So, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, things will get better uh, for the community. And I'm really pushing uh, on, the, on the committees to make sure that we get the public health that we need. 
Good. Um, can you talk about a, a little bit about what you're doing to tackle poverty in this country or in the state? Oh, yeah, that's I'm gosh, again, going back to, um, you know, working with the homeless, trying to work with the city, uh, collaborating with the city, collaborating with the county to see how we can overcome this problem with homelessness. Um, there has to be a lot more, you know, uh, communication. I have also uh, talked with the county, the city and healthcare for human services and wanting to do more workshops because I feel a lot of these individuals that are homeless, um, they, they don't know where to go and they don't know, they don't know what to do and there's not enough outreach. So I think, and, and that's another workshop that I'm, I'm going to do hopefully this summer is really reach out to these individuals and find out their issues. And what I'd like to do is start working with the nonprofits, bringing them together, collaborating with them so that we can, we can help um, the homeless individuals. And, and it starts from there, right? You, you, you place them, you get them a home, and then you work with them to try to get them uh, workforce. So, you know, one thing that I, I've thought about doing is, is trying to collaborate with the uh, general contractors, the, the, the bigger companies, you know, working with them and seeing how they can provide more jobs to these individuals that are homeless and help them get back on their feet. I'm also... Um, trying to work with Saha right now, San Antonio Housing, to make sure that um, um, I think right now they have like a seven year waiting voucher list. So trying to figure out, you know, how funds are allocated and how we can get more funds so that we can place people because I think seven years is too long of a wait to be on a, on a, on a voucher wait list. So and I'm also trying to collaborate with, you know, the, the students and trying to make sure that they stay in school and, and trade schools. Um, um, today I had a meeting with um, Leo Gomez at uh, Brooks uh, City Base. And so I'm collaborating with him as well um, with the workforce. You know, we're, we're Amazon is in Brooks City Base. And so that's going to bring a ton of work. And so we're going to work together and try to do some um, workshops and uh, job fairs to make sure that the community knows that, you know, there's work out there for them. And so I'm really, really pushing for that. Um, we send out anywhere from six to 7,000 texts to my community, just letting them know what I have going on with regards to the legislation that I'm trying to pass. So I'm going to do that with those work fairs because I really want to, you know, try to help these families get back on track and, and get to work and get their lives uh, back to some, you know, to be normal again. Yeah. Uh, Representative Campos, thank you so much for joining us today and for being our keynote on Women's History Month and for kicking off Women's History Month. I want to encourage everybody to go to the website to find out what events we've got scheduled throughout the month. And um, if you would like to make one last comment, we'll go ahead and start wrapping up. Again, just thank you so much. I'm honored to be your true public servant. And if there's anything that I can do for you, please do not hesitate to call me from the simplest thing to an issue in Austin. Um, I'll tackle it for you to the best of my ability. And if I can't help you, I'll try to get you the resources to help you. Thank you. Well, thank you, State Representative Compost, for kicking off Women's History Month for us here at St. Philip's College. You are truly a perfect role model for the Women's History Month. A national theme, which is, of course, value women of the vote, refusing to be silenced. So again, on behalf of our president, Dr. Adina williams Lawson, we want to thank you uh, for sharing your personal story, uh, your wisdom, your experiences, all very insightful. Thank you so much. And we also want to thank you for all the work that you do in District 119 uh, and for the state of Texas, and particularly uh, for the senior citizens and poverty, as you have mentioned, in the health care. Um, would li also like to thank everyone that's on the um, in attendance today for attending our kickoff event. And this does mark the beginning of Women's History Month at St. Philip's College, and we do have a fantastic lineup of events. As Adrian mentioned, please go to the website. Uh, we've also got a number of events in our classes through what we call our Alamo Experience or co-curricular activities, and on our social media site. So I continue to encourage each of you to expand your knowledge of women's history by celebrating the contributions of women here at St. Philip's College, in the state of Texas, in our nation, and within your own families. So again, for more information about our upcoming events, go to Alamo, 
www.edu backslash SPC backslash WHM or stay connected on social media using Go SPC. So this does conclude this evening's event. And I want to thank you all for joining us. Stay safe, stay healthy, and enjoy your weekend. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.